If you have been using Final Cut Pro 7 in the past and you are going over to Adobe Premiere Pro as your next step in a 64-bit program, you should be able to open up all of your Final Cut Pro 7 projects via XML in Adobe Premiere Pro. Having said that though, there may be some elements that will not translate exactly the same into Adobe Premiere Pro. I say this because you will need to budget your time to correct whatever did not come over or some things that may come over but do not look the same. This may include distortion of your video clip, the items from lower thirds that may not come intact or perhaps uh, a nested sequence with some elements either distorted or don't look the same or also may not even be in the same position. So be mindful of that. Filters may, may or may not come across. Some of them may not come across the same. Some of them they come, may not come in at all. So be mindful of that. Here we have a Final Cut Pro 7 project. It begins with a video clip which has a video transition dissolve and also has an audio transition. In the audio, there are keyframes that have been put on here to manipulate the audio. There are six tracks of audio. Once again, there are in fact audio transitions been put in place. There are also there is also a filter, a desaturate filter put on to this video clip. There is also a lower third with a bar as a background. And this lower third was built in Final Cut Pro 7. So this is one of the Final Cut Pro 7 titles. You also have a video clip that is being used as a picture in picture, which means that the motions, uh, motion parameters have been changed for that. And that is followed by a video clip, which is actually a nested sequence with three clips inside. We also have a regular clip with another video transition, followed by another clip with a regular text with transitions at the beginning and the ending of it. You also have that followed by another transition, but this time instead of a cross dissolve, this transition is a dip to color and is dipping to white. Followed by another video clip, and that is manipulated here by keyframing the motion of it as far as scaling. So it scales down to zero. So this keyframing involved followed or ending with a scrolling text. And you will notice that the scrolling text is centered with a gap in between. Alrighty, it's time to send this over to Adobe Premiere. Now the way you go about doing this, you'll go to the file menu. You'll go to the export option. You will have a sub menu. Go to the bottom of the sub menu and select on XML. XML is just a link file which will link your Final Cut Pro 7 project to Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this does not mean that you can get rid of your Adobe, um, I'm sorry, your. For, <clears throat> this does not mean that you can get rid of your Final Cut Pro 7 project and files attached to that project. You must keep everything intact. Again, XML is just a link in between the both programs. Make certain to select version 5. You can in fact select options here where it says include master clips outside selection, but for most of the time it is not necessary. And then here is a safe project with latest clip metadata, which is recommended. That is definitely should be checked on. I'll select on OK. I'm going to go ahead and save this to the desktop for simplicity's sake. I'll click on save and you see that it's very quick to save that. I'll exit Final Cut Pro 
and in my on my desktop I will have an XML file and it's called FCP to AP as Final Cut Pro to Adobe Premiere again for simplicity's sake now I'll go ahead and launch Premiere Pro from Adobe now this is CS6 but this is the same case as in CC once you have this here you'll create a new project I'll call this FCP to AP for simplicity's sake once again I'll select an OK once I have that make certain to select the project settings that match or the sequence settings that you say that match closest to your uh, Final Cut Pro 7 project if you're not sure what it is that's fine but just make sure that you try to get as close as possible and I'll just leave this the way it is for now and here I will have my project open up in Adobe Premiere now you'll see my project panel on the left on the left bottom left hand side and I'll go ahead and right click on there and I'll go to new item and then import so I'll select on import and on my desktop I will see my FCP to AP XML file I'll click on import then you'll get this window most of the time you may not get it but most of the time you probably will again this is maybe pertaining to most likely the items that are embedded with the Final Cut Pro 7 such as the titles transitions filters that may have been applied uh, maybe perhaps keyframes whatever the case may be that that may not translate at all or it may tra not translate exactly the same so be mindful of that I'll click on OK once I have that you will see a new bin appear in my project panel I'll go ahead and double click on that and it will open up this bin window and you'll see this panel here saying uh, actually showing me my clips that were involved or my, all of my elements that were involved in the project so we have audio items here we have video items and we have sequence items now the sequence named blocks is my nested sequence the sequence is called FCP AP is my regular project sequence so I'll go ahead and click on that and I'll expand on this the timeline so you can see what did and did not come over now you will notice here that I did have six audio tracks and I did in fact get all six audio tracks in the translation also by expanding this audio here you will see that the keyframes for this audio did in fact translate as well also my transition did come over so I have my cross dissolve but my video clip you will notice that the aspect ratio has been changed or there's a distortion going on again maybe not everything comes over or perhaps it's because my sequence settings here do not match my sequence settings from Final Cut Pro 7 so it can go either way so just make sure you check the controls tabs and see what uh, what it is that you have for the parameters if that was changed and if not you'll have to manipulate that here in Premiere Pro also I have my lower third which is followed which has a transition and you will notice that the lower third did in fact come over but the bar that was behind the text did not so again only partial elements from the lower third came over if I go further you'll see that the picture in picture item did in fact come over and it looks like it has the correct aspect ratio so that did have the correct aspect ratio but my original clip underneath it does not have the proper aspect ratio here is my nested sequence you will see that they all came over as well so that nested sequence with all the clips came over once again I notice that this clip here does not have the proper aspect ratio 
So maybe there's something about that that does not translate. And again, you may have to rebuild that in here. So that way this clip has the proper aspect ratio. When I say rebuild is you may have to go into the original sequence or the original nested sequence and go ahead and change the parameters for this particular clip. That's followed by again, my regular clip. And then you'll see here that my cross dissolve did come over to the next clip followed by my regular text. Now this was a regular text, nothing fancy about it. It was just a plain old text from Final Cut. But you'll see here that even though it did come over, it's in the wrong place. So again, you'll have to manipulate this in here to bring it over to the proper position where it was originally underneath the clip. This is followed by another transition, which a phase out. Then we have the dip to white. And you'll notice that the dip to white did come over so that did translate correctly followed by the clip here that which is correct and you'll see that it actually has the keyframes for the clip that has also come over so the motion manipulation did come in, in, intact and then it's followed by my scrolling text and here you will notice that the scrolling text came over but it is not one center line as it was in final cut pro 7 and two it does not have the gap in between the titles and the names as it did in final cut pro 7. so again that is because the scrolling text behaviors in adobe premiere are different from the scrolling text behaviors in final cut pro 7. something that you know you have to understand they are different programs and they don't have the same uh, settings one other thing is, if I didn't mention before, was that the filter, the saturate filter, did not come over in the first clip. So that's how you bring in your Final Cut Pro 7 project into Adobe Premiere Pro. Again, most of the items should translate fine. Some items may not translate at all, and some items may translate with some quirks that you will have to uh, fix in your project, and again, if you budget your time accordingly, this should not be that big a deal. Thanks for watching, making the real.